Hi, welcome to Marker Board Videos. This is the next in our series of Math and Minute videos, Algebra 1. Today we're going to talk about just in general factoring polynomials. And my name is Nancy Foote. So I've taught you lots of different ways to factor polynomials, and now we want to be able to identify which of the techniques we're going to use when we have a polynomial to factor. So let's go ahead and get started. So hopefully you remember that we talked about how important it is that you know what the perfect squares are. And 25 is a perfect square. And the invisible number in front of the r squared, which is 1, is a perfect square. And since we have a perfect square and a perfect square, we know the easiest way to factor that is to take r minus 5, and that whole thing is squared, and you're done. But you have to recognize that this is a perfect square and that 1 is a perfect square, or this won't work. So the first thing I want to do is remind you, memorize those perfect squares. If you've not done that yet, now would be a very good time to do it. Memorize the square of 1 all the way up to 15, and that should do you just fine. Here's another one. 10PQ plus 20P plus 3Q plus 6. Well, this is a case of factoring by grouping, and I know that because I say, well, I like that I have 10 and 20, and I like that they both have a P, so I'm going to put those two together in a group. And this, I have a 3 and a 6, and I know those are factors. 3 is a factor of 6, so I'm going to put those two in a group. And when I do that for this first set of parentheses, I can take a 10P out. I can factor a 10P out, and I'm left with Q plus 2. And for this second set, I can factor a 3 out. And look what I'm left with, q plus 2. And since that's the same, when I factor these, I can take the 10p from here, the plus 3 from there, and multiply that by q plus 2, and now I'm done. But I had to recognize, first of all, it was four terms. That's kind of a flag for me. Secondly, I noticed that these first two terms had a couple of things in common. And the last two terms had a factor in common. So those are some of the things you look for. Let's do another one. d squared plus 9d plus 14. Well, it's good that there's a 1 in front of the d squared. That's going to make my life a little bit easier, but 14 is not a perfect square. So I'm going to look for all of the factors of 14. So all of the sets of numbers that when I multiply them together give me 14. 1 times 14 negative 1 times negative 14, 2 times 7, negative 2 times negative 7. And I think that's it. Then I'm going to add these together. 1 and 14 is 15. Negative 1 and negative 14 is negative 15. 2 and 7 are 9. And negative 2 and negative 7 are negative 9. That's when I look at this term here, my b, and it's positive 9. So this is the set of numbers I want to use to factor it. Do you remember this? two sets of parentheses, put my d in the front of each one of those, that's my d squared, Then I have d plus 2 and d plus 7, and those numbers come right from there. So I'm doing reverse distribution or reverse FOIL, and that is my answer. When you have something that only has two terms, that's a good indication to look for perfect squares. I know 4 times 4 is 16, and I know 1 times 1 is 1, so I know I have perfect squares. And because I have a negative sign in the middle here, and I don't have any c term, I have a c squared, but I don't have a c term, I know that I'm going to set up two sets of parentheses. The square root of 16 is 4, multiplied by c. And the square root of, of 1 is 1, so I'm going to have a minus 1 and a plus 1. So 4c minus 1 and 4c plus 1. I don't know why they call that simplifying, because this looks way more complicated to th than this to me. So I like to say factoring rather than simplifying. Once we have this, we're closer to finding a solution if we had an, an equation instead of an expression. Let's try this one. 18n cubed plus 15n squared plus 12n plus 10. The fact that there are four terms should immediately get you thinking about grouping. 
put those two together and those two together. And when we group, remember, we want to find things inside one of those parentheses that's the same for both of these. That would be ideal. That's what we want to look for. So let's take a look. 18 and 15 each have 3 as a factor in common. And n squared and n cubed each have n squared as a factor in common. So 18 divided by 3 is 6, n, square, n cubed divided by n squared is n. 15 divided by 3 is 5, n squared divided by n squared is 1, so we don't need to put that. Now let's look at our 12 and our 10. The only factor they have in common is a 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. Oops, sorry, I said 5 and I wrote 10. It's 5. So as you can see, these are identical. So to factor them, I'm going to bring my 3n squared down, plus 2, and then use 6n plus 5 in the second set of parentheses, and I'm done. Okay? Let's try another one that looks a little more complicated than it is. 8k squared minus 80k plus 200. The easiest way to factor this is to look at 8 and 80 and 200 and ask yourself, do they have any factor in common? Well, I know the 8 and the 80 can each ha have an 8 in common, but what about the 200? If I take 200 and divide it by 8, how many, how many 8s are in 200? There are 25. So if I factor out an 8, I get k squared minus 10k plus 25. So that's good because I know though there's a 1 in front of this, which is a square number, and 25 is a square number. I'm just going to leave my 8 there, and it's going to be k minus 5 squared. Because the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 1 is 1. So there's your answer. Let's see if we can find one more to do. <laughs> Alright, let's try this one. This one's kind of, kind of involved. 15p to the 5th plus 30p to the 4th plus 20p to the 3rd plus 40p squared. All right, so the first thing I do is I look at all of these and I go, I can take a 5 out, a 5 out, a 5 out, and a 5 out. I can take p squared, p squared, p squared, and p squared. So if I take a 5p squared out, I'm left with 3p cubed plus 6p squared plus 4p plus 8. And now I have to ask myself, what can I do with that? Well, at this point, I see that I have two terms. I, I'm sorry, I have four terms. So I'm going to put those in two sets of parentheses. 3p three cu three cubed plus 6p squared and 4p plus 8. Again, I'm bringing my 5p squared just along for the ride. 3p cubed and 6p squared, what they have in common is a 3p squared. And when I take 3p squared out, I'm left with p plus 2. What do 4p and 8 have in common? A 4. And I'm left with p plus 2. Again, bring my 5p squared along for the ride, and it becomes 3p squared plus 4, p plus 2. And that whole thing is times 5p squared. So there you go. There are some things you need to look for when you're factoring polynomials. Make sure you look for them so you know what your cheat codes are so you can make life easier for yourself. If you have any questions or need any additional help, please feel free to email me. Thanks and have a great day.